Hey y'all, my name is Gregory Ajid, and today I wanted to share a few jazz techniques for classical clarinet players. Welcome back to another lesson video. My name is Gregory Ajid. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and if you're returning, please drop me a like and leave a comment. If you'd like to support my channel, please visit my website where you can download transcriptions of some killing solos and sheet music for my lessons. Today, I wanted to share a few jazz techniques for classical clarinet players. Today's video will cover growling, pitch bending, vibrato, and how to gliss. These techniques are all ways to add color and different emotions to what we play. I really want to emphasize the fact that these techniques are most effective when they're used sparingly and not overused. If you're growling and glissing all the time, it's going to lose its magic. These tools are ornaments that you can add to your sound and not meant to cover up for your musical deficiencies. They're just another color to add to your palette. Let's begin with growling. Growling is a great way to add emotion to a musical phrase. We growl by simply blowing air through the clarinet and making a growling sound with our throat. And it sounds like this when I'm not playing on the clarinet. Now do it with the clarinet. You can also hum with your throat while you're growling, and that'll add a little more sauce to the growl. Ooh. Let's talk about pitch bending. Pitch bending is an important technique because it serves as the foundation for scooping, vibrato, and your gliss. Pitch bending is when we change the pitch of a note without changing our fingering. And we can bend a pitch up or we can bend a pitch down. On the clarinet, we can bend the pitch much further down than we can up. The fewer fingers we have down, the easier it will be to bend the pitch. So if you're playing a middle B, that's going to be much more difficult than bending the pitch on a high C. As we bend the pitch downwards, we're releasing pressure on the reed, so it's really important that you support the air. When I bend the pitch downwards, I'm dropping my jaw just a little bit, and I'm opening my throat at the same time. In all honesty, it's really about opening your throat. To learn how to open your throat, you can sing a note and drop the pitch and raise it back up, and note where your throat is moving. Uh... So remember, you're dropping your jaw and changing your throat position at the same time. It's important that we support the air because that's what's going to keep the reed vibrating as we're releasing tension on the reed with our bottom lip. The farther you drop the pitch, the more you're going to need to support the air to keep the reed vibrating. I would recommend starting on a high C, play down a half step, and then see if you can bend a high C down a half step. Once you master a half step, try a whole step. Once you can bend the pitch on a high C, try it with some different notes. There is a limit as to how far you can drop the pitch because at some point the reed's gonna stop vibrating. A scoop is simply half of a pitch bend. A pitch bend goes, yeah, and a scoop is simply going, uh. Ah. 
Sidney Bechet plays a very famous scoop at the beginning of Blue Horizon on a throat A. Go check it out. The next technique I want to talk about is vibrato. Vibrato is a very important technique in the jazz idiom and can add a lot of personality and character to your tone. As a side note, I think it's really interesting that the clarinet is the only instrument in the orchestra that doesn't play with any vibrato. The flute plays with vibrato, trumpets have some vibrato, the violins have vibrato, but of course the clarinet plays with no vibrato. In a jazz context, vibrato is essential. Every musician has a unique vibrato, so it's important that you listen to as many players as possible so that you can learn how to effectively use the technique. My general rule for vibrato is if you're changing notes, no vibrato, and if you're holding a note out, you can add some vibrato. I think vibrato is most effectively used as a way to bring the listener in rather than turn them away. Remember, sometimes less is more. Also note that there's a huge stylistic difference in how vibrato is used in different eras of jazz. Sidney Bechet, Benny Goodman, Buddy DeFranco, Eddie Daniels, Alvin Batiste, and Victor Goins all use vibrato uniquely. It's important that you listen to all of them, imitate, and then figure out how you're gonna use it to create your own sound. Vibrato is essentially a very small and frequent pitch bend made with the bottom lip. I'm simply moving my bottom lip to create the effect. The vibrato is an emotional effect, and it's also a way of adding more rhythm to your playing. When I play vibrato, I'm simply moving my bottom lip up and down ever so slightly, and that adds another layer of rhythm to my note. Depending on how much you move your lip, you can create a bigger vibrato or a smaller vibrato. A good way to practice vibrato at first is to use a metronome and practice creating the vibrato in quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets, and then sixteenth notes. Listen to as many musicians as possible, imitate their vibrato, and then figure out how you're going to use it to create your own sound. Here are a few examples of different ways to use vibrato. Very generally, in older styles of jazz, musicians have more of a constant vibrato. In a more modern setting, musicians use vibrato as a way of tapering the note very subtly. Finally, let's talk about the gliss. The gliss is one of the most characteristic sounds on the clarinet. A gliss is simply us sliding upwards through the range of the clarinet. I'm sure we've all heard the clarinet intro to Rhapsody in Blue, and that is a great example of a clarinet gliss. Today, I am not gonna perform it because there's already a million billion examples of it and I think we're good. Most people think a gliss is created by sliding your fingers off of the keys, but it's actually the combination of a pitch bend and the motion of sliding your fingers off of the keys. The pitch bend is much more important than the actual sliding of your fingers. So you can see that I don't have to be exact with my finger placement to create a gliss. It's more about your throat position and creating an effective pitch bend. We can start learning how to gliss 
by sliding one finger off the clarinet at a time, going down a C major scale, B to C, A to B, G to A, and so on. Once we've become familiar with sliding one finger off at a time, we can try two fingers, three fingers, and so on. To make a larger glyphs, we're gonna combine our finger motion with a pitch bend. Ultimately, the pitch bend is the most important part of creating a big glyphs. If you wanna glyphs up into the autissimo range of the clarinet, the pitch bending is gonna be essential to making that happen. Remember y'all, these techniques are best when they're not overused. Use these techniques for good and not evil. I hope this lesson helped you on your journey. If you'd like to support my channel, please visit my website where you can download transcriptions of some killing solos and sheet music of today's lesson. All right y'all, have a great day and I'll catch you later.